Welcome to our first video on learning Python and in this video I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can interact with Python. The first first method is actually called the interactive uh, mode. It's not something that we're going to use but it's something that you should be aware of exists so I'm going to show it to you. To run it in Python in interactive mode you actually have to know where Python is located so I had to do some hunting around and found out that on my Windows machine it was located pretty deeply into the directory structure so I had to go to users cook app data local programs Python Python 3532 and now when I did that and this is this directory up here I found there in fact is Python so when you've done that Python is an actual program it takes your Python code that you write and translates it and runs it on the machine that you're on and then gives you some output. So I'm going to run Python and when I do that now I'll notice that I've got a different prompt here. So before we had this uh, little less than or greater than sign or whatever now we've got three of them. And so that means we're actually in Python and so everything we should type from now on should be in Python code. Now we don't know a whole lot of Python code but there are some simple instructions that you can run. Um, scientific, uh, Python is used for a lot of scientific computation so you can type in some numerical stuff here. So I could do something like 2 plus 3 and it tells me the answer is 5. That's not something you could normally do at a Windows prompt. So again we are in Python here. And then I could do 2 times 3. And then I could ask for something like what is the sign of 2. So getting a little more scientific now you do that though, it actually says sign is not defined, which is a little bit surprising. You'd expect Python to know what sign is. But it turns out to for Python to figure out what sign is, you have to load in something else called a module. That's something we will get into later in the semester, so don't worry about that. Um, and don't worry about running in interactive mode. I just wanted to show you how this works because what we're going to do next called script mode is going to look I guess similar but very different in another way so um, we'll I'll show you the difference um, and we're gonna do most of our stuff in script mode okay so I'm gonna get out of the shell and go into script mode to go into script mode and run PyCharm wait for that to boot up okay so when you first boot it up it gives you a list of projects here that you've already started or it gives you the option to create a new one so I'm gonna create a new project and when you do that, it asks you where you want to put it. By default, it puts it in PyCharm projects, and that's fine. So we'll call this script one. This is the first script I'm going to write. And it asks you what interpreter that you want to use. So remember that this is an interpreted language, and the interpreter takes the code that you write and translates that into code that the machine can understand. In this case, it's saying, do you want to use Python 3? And the answer is yes, but I don't have any other Python interpreters really installed, so there wasn't a whole lot of choices here. Just go with the default, I guess is what I should be saying. Don't worry about what all this means. Um, just figure out where you want to put your script, and then we can go in and actually do something here and learn how to create some Python. Okay, so what you want to do now is create some Python code. Now, when I created script one here, it didn't actually create a file for me to type in my code. What it did is create something known as a project. And you can think of a project really as just a directory. So instead of creating an actual file, it creates a directory where you can store all of your stuff. And the reason why PyCharm does that is because it doesn't know how big of a project you're working on. What we're going to do here is just a line or two of code to show you some very basics. Um, but in the last time I wrote a project, um, well not the last time, but I wrote a project that I wrote a um, solitaire game. And in that solitaire game I had to have images for all of the cards. You know, I had to have an image for the King of Diamonds and uh, the Ace of Spades and all that. And all those images actually got stored in the same place as the program. It all became part of the project. So the project encompasses not just the code, but any pictures you might need or videos or um, anything else. Okay, so this is my script one project. And I'm going to add to that. So I'm going to right click on that. And when I do, I get a chance to make new. And there's a lot of things down here that I can do. I mean, this is a pretty big menu, right? But I want a new. And I want to add a Python script or 
our Python program. So I'm going to create a Python file and we'll call it first script. You can call it. You don't really want to call it the same thing as your project. Um, but okay. Now there's one thing I want to add to this. So I'm going to go up here to view and tool windows. And I'm going to add the project view. So now what I'm looking at is I have the script here. This is where I can start typing in Python code just like I did before. So remember we did 2 plus 3 and 2 times 3. And so something different is happening here. So when I type these things in and I hit enter, I'm not getting any output. So this is one of the differences between running in script mode and interactive mode. In interactive mode, when you type in a command and hit enter, you get immediate feedback. In script mode, you have to run the um, entire piece of code. But let's come back to that in a second. The other thing, I opened up this window over here on the left, and when you do that, remember I did it through view, when I did that, um, that gives you a scope of your entire project. So in this case, this project only um, has one file in it for script.py, but that solitaire game I was talking about, it had um, a couple of different programs files in here. It had a whole bunch of um, files for all the different cards that I was using, etc. So this um, might have a lot more information in it. And this menu right here gives you a handy way of, of um, going between them. Okay, so now I have this code, and there's some things I want to look at over in here. And remember, I strongly encourage the use of PyCharm, and there's, we can start to see some of the reasons why here. So we, we have this code, but it's, it's colored differently than the white screen, and there's a reason for that. And basically what it's saying is you have some kind of bug or issue. And notice that over here we've got some highlighting, and if you put your cursor over them, you can say, it says statement seems to have no effect. What does that mean? This one gets the same thing. Um, this is an overview and it's saying you've got two warnings. These are the warnings here. Um, the statement seems to have no effect. Well, what does that mean? Well, we can try to run our program and it runs. It ran fine just here. Process Process finished with exit code zero mean that it means that it ran properly. Um, if it finishes with anything other than a zero, so then something bad happened. So what we have here is a difference between running in script mode and interactive mode. In interactive mode, if I typed in two times three, then it just printed it out. But in script mode, if you want to print something out, you actually have to tell I want to print something out. And the way you do that is you type print. And notice another advantage to PyCharm is when you you get code completion. So if you start to type a command, Python says, hey, I think you want this command here. Let me help you out with that. So notice what happens when I put print around at 2 plus 3. The error over here disappears. I'm down to one warning. And it's no longer highlighting this and saying, hey, I think you got a problem. This doesn't seem to have any effect. Um, the, the coloring has changed. It's got this, I mean, light tan color, but that's because that's the line I'm editing. When if I go down to this line, you know, that changes the coloring on the line that you're editing. Um, and then let's run it again. At, when you run a program for the first time, you have to right click and bring up this menu to run. But after you've run it once, then you can run it over here with this little button. So we'll do that, and we get an output of 5. So I had a bug in my program. Um, I wanted to print out 2 plus 3, but it, I had typed in 2 plus 3, but wasn't actually printing it. That's what's known as a semantic error. And you don't need to know this, but I'm just going to point out, it's in the first chapter of your book, so I'll point out an example. Um, the code ran without the print statement. Right? You can take the print statement off. And, you know, it gives me some warnings, but it runs, it finishes, it just doesn't do what I want it to. So if you have a program that actually executes but doesn't do what you want to, that's called a um, semantic error. So I'm going to put that print statement back. And then we'll put another one down here. I can print out 2 times 3. And 
Bingo! I've written my first script. I have my first project and I have my first script in my project. Um, now, the, I'm trying to follow along with the Think Python book, um, and it covers a few different things in there. And one of the things it talks about is an important part of programming is being able to debug your code. So um, an error in your code is called a bug, and trying to figure those errors out and get rid of them is called debugging. So we've mentioned already one kind of bug, um, a semantic error. And that's when your code runs, but it just doesn't give you the output that you were hoping for. Okay, so there are other kinds of errors that you can have. Um, you can have what's known as a syntax error. A syntax error is different from a semantic error in the following way. If I say print two times, notice I've got this red flag over here. And this is saying error. It's not saying warning. It's saying you have an error. And if I come down here, it's saying expression expected. Well, okay. So it's trying to give us a hint that something's gone wrong. Um, it may not be much of a hint, but um, PyCharm is trying to help us out here with a hint. And the problem is, two times what? If you put in a time sign, you have to multiply by something. So this is what's known as a syntax error. In this case, the code, well, at least this piece of code, won't even execute if I try to run this. I'm just going to get, well, none of the code. It just says invalid syntax. Not going to happen. So there are lots of different kinds of errors you can get. Syntax errors are ones that are pretty easy to um, fix up. Now, so we've covered syntax errors, we've covered semantic errors, and, and just to be complete, there's one more type of error you might encounter. Um, it's called a runtime error. So it's hard to do a runtime error with simple code. An example of a runtime error might be something, you know, you're trying to compute some number and you're computing and you're computing and you're computing and then as you're computing, all of a sudden something happens, you end up dividing by zero. You didn't mean to divide by zero, but you divide by zero. You can't do that and so the program just um, stops running. All the other code looks right, the syntax is fine, but it just happened that you missed some logical um, check to see if you should divide by zero and then you get a runtime error. So we'll encounter those. You'll get plenty of opportunity to debug runtime errors, but um, this is our the finish of our intro. So what you should be able to do now is open up PyCharm, create then a project, and inside of that project create a script and run some very basic scripts inside of that to do some prints.